I'm Kennedy and I make videos on all things cozy and one of those things is gaming which is the coziest activity of all. So video games are obviously really important to me and have been basically my entire life. So I just wanted to talk about some of the games that are the most nostalgic for me. Hopefully some of you will find them nostalgic too. A lot of them are just classics. So my background with gaming is I grew up with the NES, the SNES, the Sega Dreamcast, Turbo Graphics, like anything you could think of. <laughs> My mom and dad started collecting consoles as soon as they started coming out. I think they just really loved them and loved the idea of collecting all of them. So we had everyone like all of them <laughs> so my brother and i got to benefit from my parents being big old tech nerds and that led us to being big old tech nerds also uh, my brother went the more audio musician route with that and i stayed in the video games so here are my most nostalgic video games what they meant to me at the time what they mean to me now and kind of how they shaped the games i like to play now so i'll break it up by systems and consoles the first is the nes and the snes which if you don't know are just the nintendo entertainment system and the one that came after it the super nintendo entertainment system so super mario brothers i'm pretty sure this was the first game i ever played and i'm lumping again all of the ones on both of these consoles together as one but we played the first one the second one the third one back before i even had the motor skills to hold a controller i was watching my family play this and then i eventually was able to play it on my own and one of my favorite memories of watching my brother and my dad play this game was kind of getting to know the mechanics and what to expect and then all of a sudden somebody pulls a secret out of their pocket and they're running in the clouds or running in a brick tunnel that you never knew existed and I thought that was so magical about the game. I love this game for its just perfect refined simplicity, how it's influenced every current platformer, and it's just abundant secrets that'll make you feel nostalgic for a time when game secrets were only discovered through word of mouth and you had to try and find them yourself and see which ones were true and which ones were just rumors. Super Mario Brothers 2 Yoshi's Island. Apply everything I said about Super Mario Brothers to this one, same great franchise, but one thing I have to add to this one is the soundtrack shaped my childhood. These songs have wormed into my brain since I was like six and will probably stay there forever. I'll find myself like singing one specific song from this game and completely forget where it came from. Like it's just always there and then I'll remember and I'll go, oh, Yoshi's Island. <laughs> That's all. Sunset Riders. If you know this game, I love you. We're, we're right here. This is the first co-op game I think I ever played. Because Mario Brothers, you're taking turns, you know, you're, you're doing your own thing and then you're watching the other person do their own thing. This was the first game where I got to join forces with my brother and shoot the crap out of the bosses that eventually became like impossible to beat. And there was something so fun about that. I think it was just like the first time you get to engage each other with one goal and like feed off each other's frustrated energy when it got impossible and also feed off each other's like stubbornness and keep trying it time and time and time again. Just a great game. And that one boss, I forget what he says. Marry me with my money. But we would say we would say this all the time to each other. Nintendo 64. I feel like this was a lot of my generations, which I say my generation, I'm in between two generations. I'm like a zillennial. <laughs> this was like the console for millennial video game memories of their childhood, you know? Super Mario 64, a classic, of course. This was the first non-platformer game I ever tried, and I think I share the same feelings as everybody who played this game, that it was just magical. Like you really felt like you were right there with blocky little Mario jumping around the castle and hopping into paintings. Which is so crazy looking back at the graphics now because it felt like you were transported into that world and now it's just like, how? <laughs> how was I convinced by these graphics? But I love old graphics. They have a charm to it that is unmatched. However, I do feel like the water level scarred me for life and I now have a intense fear of underwater things and I can only trace it back to that, so. The next game is Donkey Kong 64. And this was the first game I played that was like split screen, not 2D. And they had this like versus mode. It just felt so different from the 2D multiplayer games I was used to. And it, again, it was just magical. Of course, as 
children, my brother and I would just play like hide and seek in the game and like not actually do the versus mode, but I still have such fond memories of it. And this is just my disclaimer that I know Ocarina of Time was a cultural touchstone and everybody's most nostalgic game but my family wasn't big on zelda and so i didn't get the opportunity to ever play it and i still curse little child me for not you know going out and getting a job or something and being able to buy it on my own <laughs> could you imagine a like seven year old at baskin robbins like yeah i just really need to get ocarina of time and the next couple i feel like might be a little bit more specific to me and maybe a little less relatable but i hope they are relatable the first is seaman on sega dreamcast i never actually played it myself because i was too young but i watched my family play this and oh my god if you can find some youtube gameplay of this game you will be like what in the grown man tamagotchi you're basically like tending to these little sea creatures like they start as like tadpoles and then they become like man sea men you can teach them to talk and they'll be sassy to you if you left the aquarium for a long time and haven't taken care of them or checked on them it is both terrifying and absolutely fascinating just fascinating <laughs> clearly left an impression on me because i remember like every detail of the game and i wasn't even the one playing it i remember the loading screen i remember the aquarium setup i remember the, the little little seaman faces just blinking back at you and now switching over to handheld games. I was young at the time when Game Boy Advance was, I think, the most popular system, but my family still had really old handheld systems that were massive. One of those was Turbo Graphics. It is a brick. It is a literal brick. But I had the absolute treat and pleasure to play this whenever we went on plane rides and plane rides whenever we took a plane anywhere <laughs> and went on a trip and so i have such positive associations with the excitement of going on a trip and getting to play this handheld game that i didn't get to play at home i don't know why i guess that was a rule my parents had those games were just so special and one of them was bonks adventure and it's a platformer where you're this little caveman with a big head who just bonks enemies with his head and that's the whole game <laughs> i just i love the animation is so late 80s and the colors are so late 80s and it's just it's great and because the game boy advance was popular at the time i got to play that on the planes too and sometimes in long car rides and wario land 4 oh my gosh i don't know why they don't still make these these were my favorite platformers on game boy advance it felt much more engaging. There's so much more problem solving to it than classic Mario type platformers. And Wario always has this zaniness that I love. Like even the DS game was zany and I love it. They always have a bit more edge in character than other games in the same category. And I think that just felt unique to me as a kid. And so I was, I was reaching for that more than anything else. The next system is GameCube. What a system. I don't know how I don't have a GameCube. I need to go on eBay and get one like today now. The first game for GameCube is Super Monkey Ball 1. Super Monkey Ball 1. I think it is the best of the Super Monkey Ball franchise, the entire thing. The best one. The level design was superb, superb, especially with the different levels for each difficulty. You could tell there's so much thought put into each level and so much atmosphere to put into the different kind of level themes. You know, you had to practice a lot to get some levels down, but there was something so rewarding in that and actually having to put in that time practicing it over and over and over to be able to finally get it down and playing this multiplayer with your family it was like a riot because you're equally like rooting for them to finish this course that everybody's been trying to finish and can't finish and hoping they fail and fall off because you want to win and the next is mario sunshine and you know what's funny about mario sunshine is i didn't realize that i didn't finish the game or ever actually do anything in the game when i was younger until i got mario all-stars on the switch and tried to finish it which was damn near impossible <laughs> playing it now i'm like this is difficult 
this is hard. Throw your controller at the screen, throw your switch at the wall. <laughs> Maybe that's just me, but it's hard. So now I know as a kid, I was just running around arbitrarily, you know, spraying my water thing at the walls, pretending like I was really, like really doing something <laughs> around the town. I wasn't doing anything. I was not doing a damn thing. But this game like Mario 64 was just so fun seeing Mario out of the 2D platformer element and being able to run around this 3D world and doing so in this like bright, fun, lively island was so cute and really fun. And the last one for GameCube is Super Smash. This was a game that I have such fond memories playing with our family friends. And the fact that there were a bunch of teenage boys allowing like eight, nine year old me play this game with them. Looking back, it was so, so sweet. But the Hyrule Castle was the one that I remember most and I would just play Kirby every single time. They would let me hop around and not bother me until, you know, they had to get me out of the way and then they would kill me. I thought I had done so well at surviving when really they were just like letting me live. It was so wholesome. It was so wholesome. So this is a PSA to let your younger siblings and your younger siblings friends and neighbors or whatever play games with you because they'll appreciate it. And the next system is PlayStation. I'm lumping PlayStation 1 and 2 in here because those are the systems we had at the time. I don't even think 3 had come out until I was older. There were so many. We had literally a, you know, those CD pouches. We had one of the long ones filled with PlayStation games. And my brother and I would just like every day pick one and try and play it and see if it was fun. So that in and of itself was an, an entire journey. But my most nostalgic games on PlayStation, Tomb Raider 2. I had to include this purely for the sake of her much less pointy boobs in this version. Great, uh, you know, design trajectory. Love that. And for the fact that all I did was just glitch into the mansion through like this one specific window and then run around and play in the pool and get scared out of my mind whenever I realized the butler follows you around and that he was still following me even though I went into the house. So that's that. I'm sure it was a great game apart from the mansion, but that's all I know of it. And I have the fondest memories. Street Fighter. We had the PlayStation versions. Oh my god, I remember watching my dad and brother go at this forever and ever. And then when I'd play, I'd play as Chun-Li always, of course. And I would just button mash. And I would still win, like, 50% of the time doing that. And I think I just loved that it frustrated my brother so much. Great game. <laughs> Loaded. This is definitely a less popular game. I never, ever see it talked about. I think you're asylum or, like, prison inmates and you're trying to break out. And my brother and I picked this up in high school school again for some reason like we just got into a, a phase where we were going back and playing like old PlayStation games and this one was so fun and it held up it held up Grand Theft Auto 3 I think this might be my all-time like top five favorite games the hours my brother and I put into this oh my god and since you couldn't play it, there was no multiplayer in this version you we were just like handing it off like switching as one person would die we'd hand it to the next person and I'm sure if I went back to play it now which again is why I want an old console collection because I would love to go back and play these games I'm sure if I went back to play it now the world would feel much smaller but it felt huge it felt massive and it felt like you were constantly discovering new things and and the traffic lights were on a schedule, the the metro came on a schedule. It was just so cool. It felt like this living world that you you can either just create absolute chaos in or or not. You could just drive around and follow the traffic rules. I did that a lot. <laughs> and the cheat to change the character. You know the one? <laughs> That's gonna be burning my brain forever. Because if you weren't running around wreaking havoc as a granny. What were you, were you even playing Grand Theft Auto? Robotech. For some reason, my family went through a Robotech phase. Like we watched the whole series. So we got the game too. And it's really fun. Like it's a really fun versus game to play. And my brother and I would sometimes just not even fight each other. We would just fly around for hours. And now we're getting into the years when I got older and I started playing more solitary games and I was buying my own game because I finally had money from like birthdays and stuff. And I'll start with PC games. The first is Sims 2, which I feel like is the gateway game for a lot of women. Back in the day, there weren't a lot of games marketed towards not men. <laughs> I think Sims was the only one that was kind of just like universally marketed and a lot of people that I talked to in gaming that weren't into shooters and stuff are like yeah Sims, Sims 2 was the game that I played for hours and hours and hours every day and same man as soon as I got this game 
I was a goner. What happened was I played Sims 1 at somebody's house and they could not pull me away from that computer for the rest of the night. Like we were at a family friend's house and I was like, no, this is where I'm gonna be. Can I stay here? Can I live here? Can I move in? Literally like that next weekend, I was like, I needed advance mom. I know my birthday's coming up, I need an advance because I need to get Sims 2. And so I, we went, <laughs> I went to Target and got the like box. At the time you couldn't get digital downloads, you had to buy the box. But I was like, who was keeping this world of games for me? This is an entire world and a game that you can customize and do whatever you want in. I, hours, hours, days I played that game. Weekends, the whole weekend, I'd be in that computer room playing that game. And then I would like print out cheats. <laughs> for the game. You know, mother load and bull prop testing cheats enabled true. Yep. All those. I wish every day with my whole heart that the Sims franchise still had the same impact it did on me now that it did back then. And the next one is Club Penguin. And I know this is not a video game, it's a website, but I feel like it's essential to include. It was the first like online space that I ever had where it was like a game mixed with communicating with people you know in real life if you want or strangers on the internet and that was the coolest thing to me ever because we didn't have phones we didn't have i didn't use like aim we couldn't do that we were eight or nine or whatever however my parents like didn't believe in paying for things on the internet at that time and so i was one of the broke kids who didn't have any fun accessories or any cool igloo stuff it was just like the bog standard construction hat and whatever else. And now we're on to the DS years, the Nintendo DS. I saved up for like a year and a half, a year and a half for a DS. All my friends had one. They were like playing Nintendo dogs and I was like, just wait for me guys. I, I'm, I'm saving up my birthday and Christmas gift cards to trade my mom real money for. <laughs> By the time I actually saved up for one and none of my friends played it anymore. <laughs> but I think it made me appreciate like having an actual console of my own that I bought with my own money more and it made me appreciate every game that I bought because I bought it with my own money. Thank you parents for teaching me that lesson. <laughs> so the first super nostalgic game is Harvest Moon DS. I had the cute version. I don't know why it was called cute but I got the cute version. I didn't know anything about farming simulators. That was not anything my family bought before. I just was like well this looks cute let's try it. And thank god I did because I'd say my favorite genre of games now is farming sims and the only reason I played Stardew Valley when it came out was because I was like oh this looks like Harvest Moon which was modeled after it but building up that farm getting a horse all of that was so rewarding and so fun and so addicting although I did overwrite my file on accident and um, I, I was heartbroken and did not play it again or any farming sim like it until Stardew Valley came out. The next is My Sims which Dude, why are there not more games like this now? It's like Animal Crossing, but with more objectives and tasks and mini games. There's more to do, and I liked that. And I think they should release another one for Switch. Sims 2, man, man oh man. I think my favorite DS game ever. This is not like Sims 2 on the PC. It's like its own story. It's on like a real time clock where you have to wait like real days to finish things. You can build relationships with the people in the town. You can figure out the town's mysteries. And there's just the like classic Sims 2 edge and uh, just good, good stuff that just the franchise doesn't, doesn't really bring much anymore, unfortunately. Also, I came back to this during quarantine and it holds up. I had a whole new save file, played the whole thing through, like the entire storyline, every day. It was engaging, it was fun, like even more so than a lot of games that come out today. Cooking Mama, just a solid ass game, just a solid ass cooking game. Great, amazing art, the sound effects, the just so satisfying, you know, it's like ASMR. It's great, it's great. Also, can we talk about how the DS had game after game after game targeted towards little girls. Loved that, loved that. Like a lot of the games at the time I was playing was I think a little bit younger for me, like a little bit too young, you know, like Barbie and like Strawberry Shortcake. But that's the only console that consistently, consistently had female marketed 
games and I love that. Or I guess I like the de that the developers recognize that as a viable market. All right, and so <laughs> switching back from cooking and Sims and life sim games back to shooter games on the Xbox, Halo 1 and 2. This will always be my favorite shooter game because like Robotech, you could just run around, just have fun driving around in the warthogs, flying around in the ghosts. It was it was so fun. This game actually introduced me to shooter games and actually getting better at them and learning the mechanics of them. And I also do have the most fun memories of playing the campaign mode. I don't remember if it was one or two that had the flood. I think it was two, but just that one level where the flood come pouring in, I just remember like screaming at the top of my lungs, like running around like, no, this is my worst nightmare. Those I think are the scariest video game enemy. Prove me wrong, please, because God. The last one is Jedi Academy. I just love that you can spectate in this game because we would play this with family friends too. And you know, they'd be fighting. And I love that you could have AI or computers fighting too in the versus mode. And you could play in teams or just like everyone against everyone. But I love that you could spectate because when I was done fighting, I was like, I died too many times. I This is, this is not fun. I would just spectate and you could fly around and watch people fighting each other. And it was so cool. I, there was not another game that had that that I knew of at the time. So those were my most nostalgic games. I hold them very near and dear to me and have the best memories with them. And they definitely influence the games I, I love to play now. Clearly I love exploring and doing off-task things and games like Breath of the Wild absolutely let you do that. And I loved Farming Sims and now there's Stardew Valley that I will love forever for the rest of my life. And just, I love video games for being able to provide those special memories, not just with the game, but with the people you're playing with. I formed the best bonds with my brother playing video games. And some of our funniest like inside jokes come from playing video games together. I would love to hear the games that are the most nostalgic for you because I know they're very specific and special to each person. So drop your list in the comments. One little announcement is that I do have Cozy Gamer merch. Um, we are Cozy Gamers here on my channel. And I, I just love that title. I think that perfectly encapsulates why I love gaming at this point in my life. To me, even shooters and action games can be cozy. You know, you wanna curl up and just shoot some sh So cozy gamers does not just mean, you know, casual games, although that's what I'm playing nowadays. I'll have that link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I love you, stay cozy, and have a great day. Bye.